All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to be showing you guys a little something that some of you people, Steve probably, over at Ventari's workshop, is going to say is a little nerdy, uh, a little bit of a tech uh, thing. But y'all, you know, I like technology, I like automated things. It just, it's my thing. All right. So, doing a lot of batch stuff yesterday, I was working on May May's projects, uh, getting things batched out. And I've been toying with the idea of being able to control light burn with the simple push of a button, not on my keyboard, not having to use the mouse. Because sometimes when you're trying, I have, you know, different things going. Uh, it's just a little easier to just push a button and get things to happen. And so I started playing with the idea this morning, doing some, some testing and running through some stuff. And I've come up with a way of controlling light burn that's unique. I can't find anything on it anywhere. So maybe this is something you guys haven't ever seen. It is pretty cool, especially if you already have the equipment. And the equipment that you'll need is, of course, a stream deck. Uh, I have a stream deck because I use it when I'm recording videos and such like this. But they're relatively inexpensive and can be used to control different apps on your computer. And today I'm going to show you how I've got mine set up to work with light burn so that when I'm doing jobs, I can just basically work it with without having to fool with the mouse using uh, hotkeys that are programmed into Stream Deck. So if that's something you're into, stick around and I'm gonna show you how I come up with this uh, contraption. All right, guys, before we get too involved, if you're looking for what I'm using as far as a stream deck, look down below in the description. I'm gonna drop some links down there to Amazon where you can find the uh, stream deck. It's the same one I'm using. They have a bigger version, but uh, it's a little more expensive. So look down below for those. All right, guys, so the bulk of it, you're just basically gonna do some programming on your computer. Not a lot, it's simple click, a uh, little bit of typing. Uh, that kind of thing. But to show you all of that, I'm gonna put you over on the screen and we're gonna kinda show you what you need to know and how to go about setting it up with your Stream Deck. So let's get down to the, uh, the screen here. All right, so in Lightburn, uh, you have different controls and hotkeys. A lot of you guys know about when you're node editing the different shortcuts that you can use to do things. I'm a big, uh, like I guess I do things the hard way a lot of times, so I don't use a lot of shortcuts, but I do like little one push buttons. So. The way that you're going to want to figure out what these are for your Stream Deck, we'll show you that first, is go over here into Edit Hotkeys uh, in Lightburn. And this will basically give you a list of every function in Lightburn and what the hotkeys are for it. Some of them do not have a hotkey assigned to it, so you may have to create one. Uh, that's basically just come up with a complex. If you're doing what I'm doing with the Stream Deck, you can come up with as complex of a keystroke as you want because you're not actually going to be using the keyboard. You're going to be assigning hotkeys inside the Stream Deck. So once you've obtained the information that you need here, uh, you can uh, program your Stream Deck. And I'm going to pull my Stream Deck software up here, and we'll just kind of we'll kind of pop these to the side here so that we can see what we're doing. All right, now that I got those where you can see what you're doing. Uh, you'll use the information from inside the hotkeys here and what you'll do is you'll go over to your stream deck and you'll notice uh, on my stream deck I've got this page here. These are the other pages that I use for lives and stuff like that but you can just keep adding pages uh, and, and, and come up with different things. This is my, my light burn page here. Uh, I've got the basic functions because I'm not trying to do anything too complex with the stream deck. So I've got home, and you'll notice here that uh, I set a control home as my shortcut. So if you go over here to uncategorized, that is where your basic movement commands are. So I've set up control alt F for frame, all this control home uh, for the home laser. And you can, you can use any of these you want to over here. I just chose the ones that I use the most, which is going to be home, uh, frame, uh, start, of course, pause, and stop. Some of the other ones that I find myself using a lot, of course, are the uh, uh, vertical alignment or horizontal alignment, vertical alignment, and the center. 
and then this guy. I do use that a lot, especially when I'm trying to uh, do something. If I got a if I got a piece of work in there and I've marked the center, then I use the uh, move to uh, laser location button quite frequently on little one-off jobs that I'm doing. Uh, and in Stream Deck, if you're not familiar with how to do it, guys, all you got to do is come over here to the side and you grab one of these little commands, uh, the hotkey, you drop it there. And then when you click this button, it's going to watch the keyboard and see what buttons you push and it's going to assign it. So if I push Control, Alt, Shift, and Backspace all at the same time, it's going to set that button for that command. Now, I don't know what in the world that does, so we're not going to leave that there. Uh, but once you do that, then you just got to go over here. And if you double click this thing, it'll open up your icon assignment. And what I have done, and I'll share these with you guys, is I went into Adobe and created, basically took the images from Lightburn, which I'm familiar with, and have created my own little icon set for the functions that I use. And so then you just go over here and you can click on one of these icons and it'll assign it to it. Uh, go up here. I don't need the names because I recognize the icons. So I just take the, the name out and uh, leave it like that. Now these, I did actually leave those in there. So the way you would fix that is go in here and backspace that out. Cause I, I really don't need that. I don't know why I put that in there to start with, but anyway, we'll take those out. Because most of us that have worked with Lightburn for a while know what those are. If you don't, you can label them up here on the top where it says title and uh, do it that way. But I, I, I like as minimal and as clean as possible for the setup. So now that I've showed you kind of how to go about doing it, uh, and the Stream Deck software, if you don't already have one, guys, it comes with the machine when you purchase it. And uh, so a lot of times what I do and... Uh, I'll kind of show you here. Let me uh, let me get back to my camera button. I'll show you how I've... Usually what I'll do is I'll have these buttons set up during the live to control different things, swapping the camera feed, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, so if I want to do... If I want to do a screen overhead or whatever, I got all these buttons assigned. Uh, then I got my, my, you know, musical stuff here. And the last page is my light burn controls. So I'm going to move you over to where you can see everything that's going on and you'll be able to see the, the laser moving in the, uh, in the screen as well here. So let me, uh, let me change my settings here. There we go. So you should be able to see right here on this side of the screen, you can see the actual laser itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my stream deck and I'm going to control it just using the stream deck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame that little orange Try, uh, square that's in the middle of the workspace by hitting this button here that I have marked as frame. So, like I said, watch the you can watch the uh, laser over there in the small screen. So it's frame in there. All right. And if for some reason, let's say I move the design up to the top of my workspace, which <laughs> wrong wrong place to move it. But if I move the design up here, and let's say I want to take the laser and I want to put it in the center of that burn then uh, or if I want to move the the burn to where the laser is correction guys I can hit this button here and it's gonna bring that design down to exactly where the laser is uh, there again if I want to home the machine I can get that button and home if I have multiple of these let's see I'm gonna go ahead and put two of these in here then uh, when I've got them selected I can use these buttons here to move them around and center them and all that good stuff so that's uh that's what i've done and yes guys it's a little uh <laughs> it's a little geeky i understand that uh and it's not necessarily something that you, you may not want to run out and buy a stream deck to be able to do this but one advantage that this would have for you guys that maybe your computer is on the other side of the room from where your machine is but you want to be able to frame or whatever there where your computer or your laser is, you could actually use a USB cable long enough and you could set this up with your laser, where your laser is located. And then when you got ready to, uh, when you got ready to frame or something like that, you can just hit the frame button here 
and not have to go over to your machine. Uh, some of the newer machines, they have a button on the front that you can use to frame and so forth. And that's pretty convenient sometimes. Uh, but, you know, if you're, let's say you're working from a, uh, a hard PC, like a desktop PC like I do, you could actually move this over to where your laser is located. And if I wanted to, uh, another thing too that I can do, and we'll go ahead, I've got a job that I need to do right quick. So we'll just kind of walk through this. Uh, I'm gonna open up one of my boxes. I need a toolbox for one of my new machines that I have. So we'll we'll go ahead and set that job up and just kind of show you uh, how it works and that it actually does work. So boxes, uh, where's my box? Okay. I'm gonna open this box file. I need a new uh, box for the Atom Stack machine that I've got now. And so I'm gonna bring this over, get everything in there. The one thing that I haven't done yet and I wanna do is put me a button to update the overlay. I'm gonna work on that here in a minute because I update the overlay a lot and it would just be easier if I could uh, do it using the machine over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and home the machine using the Stream Deck. Like I said, Yes, it's not that much harder to hit the home button. This is just, it's, <laughs> it's just tech, guys. It's just tech. All right, so I'm going to take and uh, ungroup this. I'm going to delete this one. Delete that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to duplicate that guy and use my arrow keys to move it over so that I keep everything aligned. And we're gonna cut out a box. So I'm gonna regroup this. I'm gonna resave this as a different file name. All right, so now that I've got it in there, guys, I can uh, simply frame by hitting my button, which is cool. Let me go turn the air assist on while it's finishing. All right now, and I can actually just start the job by hitting the start button, guys. So there we go. And that's, uh, that's the basics of it guys yes it is a uh it's a, it's a little nerdy but i like it all right guys so before y'all jump on the bandwagon with steve because i know he's gonna give me a hard time about this i just thought it was something cool and i've already got the thing bolted to my my desktop here where i use it in the lives and use it for video recording a lot so it was it was kind of just one of those things i was like hey i'm gonna add a little more functionality to my stream deck get a little more money's worth back out of it and uh, it's pretty neat, it's pretty cool. As long as you have the appropriate window selected, uh, you, you, you wanna be careful with that because if you have, like I do, with multiple screens, you do have to make sure you have the proper instance of light burn selected before you push the buttons because whatever instance of light burn is selected is the one that's gonna get the, uh, the command. So, but just a little hack for uh, using light burn remotely. Like I said, I think some of you might actually like the idea of having this to put near your machine, you know, just outside your enclosure. You can mount it to the top of your enclosure box. That would look cool. And you would actually have uh, the ability to control it from there without having to walk back over to where your computer is if you were trying to home, start, pause, stop, all that good stuff. But uh, just one of those things, guys, thought I'd share with you. I also, my little icon pack that I made, uh, I, those, I thought those turned out pretty well. So I'm gonna compress those into a zip file, add them to Google Drive, and uh, I'll include a link down below if you wanna download those. I'm not gonna charge anything for them. They're pretty simple, but uh, they look really sweet on the Stream Deck with the whole black and white theme. So I uh, thought I'd share those. But if you hadn't already, guys, hit that subscribe button. Please give the video a thumbs up if you like it, and uh, share the word. Uh, one more little uh, tech tip, I guess you could say, for Lightburn. But until next time, guys, be safe. And have a good day.